We talked today about um, reducing use, um, prudent use of antibiotic, uh, diminishing use overall. With a few exceptions, I think in most cases, antibiotics are used in human health, at least in the developed world, to treat clinically ill individuals. And there are some prophylactic uses for surgery and dentistry and so on. But my expectation of these uh, technologies on the animal side, uh, and I say technologies, but in many cases they're natural products, is um, they will substitute largely in the prevention uh, realm. And, uh, but there'll be two areas. One is, if, if you think about preventing the diseases that afflict animals that, that cause an economic consequence to the farmer, um, they have potential benefit for that. But the other, and, and recently some large poultry integrators have, have reported success on using essential oils, for example, in reducing um, not only the risks to the animal in terms of their, their health, but reducing carriage of potential foodborne pathogens, Salmonella, Campylobacter. As we progress in this area, if we start thinking about prevention, um, you know, there's a direct impact on animal health, measurable impact, but there's also the potential future impact on human health. I wonder whether you think that the current kind of climate at the moment and the increasing international pressure to reduce unnecessary use of antibiotics is in itself uh, enough of a driver to drive that new innovation in alternatives. We're a little bit missing the integrated approach we, we really need for, for this uh, global problem is that um, yes, pharmaceutical um, have to have some incentive to find new classes of drug, uh, but the producer needs to have some incentives to, to do more prevention. Researchers need more incentive to find alternatives and um, uh, just by the uh, uh, discussion in, in, in general since a few years about the antimicrobial resistance, there are more funding for researchers, for example, to attempt to find alternatives. There are nutrition programs and uh, uh, livestock uh, programs and animal science departments that could greatly benefit from support for research uh, in this very area. So, I mean, I think the, the faculty, research faculty, are, are chomping at the bit to get started on this kind of stuff, but they have to, to have the funding to get it done, so. The issue when you do research in, in um in, in animal agriculture is adoption and diffusion and, and not chasing technologies that have no chance of industry adoption. And, and when there seems to be no economic incentive for the ultimate end users, as we've seen with the vaccination, the vaccine for E. coli, 0157 and other stacks, you have a problem of why should I pay for something when I don't see the benefit? And this technology will, sir, will, will see the same problems with adoption unless the incentive from uh, if you will, uh, consumers through retailers and restaurateurs to provide that product uh, using alternatives exists. And I think we're starting to move into that area and so I think the opportunities will expand.